greetings viewers whenever you are watching my name is Apostle Martin Mutwiri and today I want to share a simple topic on how to study the Bible and understand by yourself hallelujah first of all uh, before I begin this topic on the how to study the Bible I want to let you know that the Bible is the written word of God and it is a holy book that is accepted by Christians all over the world and the Bible is a very important tool for a Christian so the more you, you are in touch with your Bible the more you are a better Christian the Bible was written by men who are inspired by the Holy Spirit and it has 66 books 27 in the New Testament and that 9 in the Old Testament to read the Bible is one thing and to understand it it is another hallelujah so before I begin on how to study the Bible and understand it by yourself once a friend of mine told me that the word Bible is an acronym which stands for basic <laughs> information before leaving the earth meaning that it contains information that you need to know before you enter into glory or eternity hallelujah so the more you know this information the more you'll be prepared for eternity. Hallelujah. Now, in order for you to understand the Bible, you need the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible is full of revelation. One verse in the Bible can call a generation into revelation hallelujah i'm going to to teach you on how to study the bible and understand it by yourself and i'm going to use acronym spec spec for specter uh, it's a, a short of spectacles s p e c k spec it's like you are using the spectacles, spec. S for sins to confess. P for promises to claim. E for examples to follow. C for commands to obey. And K for knowledge to acquire. Anytime you read any verse of the Bible, whether it's in the book of Revelation, or is in the book of Matthew or Revelation or, or Genesis or Revelation. There is always information there. There is always an interpretation. And for upcoming Christian, maybe you received Christ recently, or you have been an old Christian, but it has become a challenge for you to understand the Bible. But if you can use this basic information I'm giving you, it can enable you to understand more and interpret the Bible so that you can get the revelation. Hallelujah. Number one, I talked about when you read any verse in the Bible, it may contain information on sins to confess. Believers, what is a sin? Sin is something that is knowledgeable violation of a norm or simply ignoring God anytime you find yourself ignoring God you are committing a sin for example you can there are sins that we commit because there is good that the Lord expected us to do but we never did it maybe out of our own ignorance or maybe out of our own lack of knowledge so there are sins that you commit 
because something good you are expecting to do you never did it there is also a category of sin that we do because of evil you commit evil knowing or unknowing it can also be a sin we also have mortal sin and immortal sin now the bible says in the book of first john chapter number one verse number nine if we confess our sins to him he is faithful and just to forgive us he is faithful and just to forgive us so for example if you read a certain verse in the bible you may find out that there is a certain thing that the bible says you should not do and whatever the bible says you should not do or you avoid that is a sin for example if you read the book the bible in the book of exodus chapter number 20 verse number 2 to 17 it talks about the 10 commandments anything that you do there in the 10 commandments against it is a sin so when you have your time go through exodus chapter number 20 verse number 2 to 17 look for the 10 commandments look for what to avoid look for what you should not do or what you should do now also when you are looking for sins to confess you may find out that in the bible there are people that were punished because they did this so anytime you study any verse of the bible look whether there is sins to confess whether there is something that the bible says you should not do and you did and you confess hallelujah the second thing anytime you study any verse of the bible you should look for promises to claim hallelujah promises of god for example if you read second corinthians chapter number one verse number 19 to 20 the bible says the promises of god are yes and amen we have the promises of god in every aspect of life so when you read the bible look for the promises of god to claim we have over three thousand promises of god in the bible we have promises of god in every aspect of life from eternity for example in the book of john chapter number six verse number 54 the bible says whoever feeds in my flesh and drinks my blood as everlasting life and i will reselect him on the last day then the bible says that whoever will feed on the flesh and drink the blood of jesus he has everlasting life and the lord will deselect him in the last day that is a promise of eternity so the moment christ is in you he is part of you you are going to receive eternity in the afterlife we have the promises of god about prosperity for example in the book of second chronicles 20 verse number 20 it talks about how the lord will establish you and how the lord is going to give you prosperity when you listen to his prophets we have the promises of god in the area of healing for example you are sick look for bible verses that talk about healing for example you need protection Look for the verses of the Bible that talk about protection. The Bible says in the book of Job chapter number 36 verse number 11. If they obey, they shall spread their ears in prosperity. It's a promise. If they obey, they will spread their ears in prosperity. So this, if, as long as you are obeying the Lord, it means that you will be involved in prosperity hallelujah number three another thing to look for 
when you are reading the Bible are examples to follow. In the Bible, we have various people. We have the nation of Israel. We have the other nations. And we have various men that were holy and how they walked before God. We have Abraham, our father of faith. How he walked with God. How he obeyed. How he prayed to God. How he gave to God. How he used his faith. For example, if you read the Bible in the book of Hebrews chapter number 11. It is the chapter of faith. It talks about heroes of faith. Examples, how they did. It talks about Abraham, Hebrews 11 verse number 8, it says, By faith Abraham, when he was caught to go to a place, he will later receive as inheritance. He obeyed and went even though he did not know where he was going. That is an example. It teaches you to obey. Hallelujah. So, when you read the Bible, you fight various people. You fight major prophets. You fight minor prophets. You fight women in the Bible. You fight men in the Bible. You fight the disciples of Jesus in the Bible. You fight the people of the nation of Israel. Hallelujah. You know, try to check the example of how they conducted themselves before God and follow that example. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. You meet from Genesis. You meet uh, you meet uh, Adam and Eve. You run from their success and their downfall. You meet Cain and Abel. Hallelujah. You meet Prophet Jeremiah. You meet Prophet Nehemiah. You meet Moses. You meet Joshua, you meet Caleb. Hallelujah. You meet people like Simon Peter. You meet people like Jonah. When he was caught by going to go to pray to Neve, you look for example how he obeyed and how he disobeyed. What were the consequences? You meet people like Paul, the apostle, who has written to us almost over 13 epistles. It's about a large percentage of the New Testament. You meet the, the, the Stephen, the first Christian martyr. You meet various example people. Study their character. Look for how they conducted themselves before God and follow that example. Hallelujah. Imitate. St. Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. So, whatever St. Paul did, how he conducted himself before God, look for that example and follow. How Peter conducted himself before God, look for that example and follow it. And you will be a better Christian. Hallelujah. Then number four. There is something we call commands to obey. Anytime you are reading the Bible, also look for commands to obey. Commands are what the Lord says you should do and what you should not do. Hallelujah. I talked about Exodus chapter number 20, verse number 2 to 17. That is one part of the Bible that reckons us about commands to obey. For example, we have the first commandment. Uh, uh, Commandment number one, it says, I am the Lord your God, you shall not have no other God before me. Meaning that do not worship other gods. Commandment number two, you shall not worship idols. Commandment number three, you shall not take the name of the Lord in vain. Commandment number four, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Commandment number five, honor your father and mother so that your days will be longer here on earth. Commandment number six, it says, you shall not manda. Do not commit murder. Do not commit abortion. Do not kill poor innocent blood. Commandment number eight, it says, number seven, it says, you shall not commit adultery. Number eight, you shall not steal. 
Number nine, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. And commandment number ten, it says, you shall not covet your neighbor's property. Hallelujah. These are commands to obey. When you do them, there is a blessing. And when you disobey, there is a curse. Deuteronomy chapter number 28, it talks about what will happen to you when you obey. You listen to the voice of the Lord and follow it. What will happen to you? You shall be blessed in the city and you shall be blessed outside the city. You shall be blessed in everything that you do. And also there, it talks about what will happen to you if you don't listen to the voice of God and obey. Hallelujah. So anytime you... There are various examples in the Bible that talk about commands to obey. Commands are instruction from heaven, instruction from Jehovah, instruction from Jehovah God of Israel, instruction from the Holy Spirit, instruction from Jesus. Look for those commands and obey them. You'll be a better Christian and you'll be able to have a, a deeper revelation of the word of God. Hallelujah. I remind you once more, Job chapter number 36, verse number 11, it says, If they obey, they will spread their ears in prosperity. If they obey, they will spread their ears in prosperity. Believers will love to prosper. But ask yourself, are you obeying the commands of our Lord Jesus Christ? Are you obeying whatever is written in the Bible? Whatever is written in the Bible, are you obeying? Are you obeying whatever is written in the Bible? Hallelujah. The fifth thing that you can be able to use in order to analyze and interpret the Bible, you can look for knowledge to acquire. The Bible is the book of knowledge, it is the book of wisdom. There is believers. There is no other book in the world that is is full of unsearchable knowledge of ages like the Bible. Hallelujah! When you read the Bible, you are able to know the mind of God. You are equipped with the knowledge of the Word of God. For example, in the Bible, you can be able to find various forms of knowledge. You can be able to know the knowledge of knowledge of truth. There is a certain form of truth that is in the Bible. You can be able to acquire knowledge of every good thing you knew in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter number 6, it talks about the putting the whole hammer of God. That is knowledge. Knowledge of every good thing you knew in Christ Jesus. You'll be equipped with the knowledge about the power of Jesus Christ. How to release the anointing. How to tap the power of God. How to receive divine visitation. Hallelujah. How to worship God. How to glorify God. Read the Bible. You'll be equipped with that knowledge. Hallelujah. You'll be able to acquire knowledge in the area of marriage. Knowledge in the area of family. Knowledge in the area of career. For example, if the book of Proverbs, chapter number 31, it, uh, from verse number 1 to 9, there is a certain king that is being advised there, and he is receiving knowledge about why he should not drink alcohol, and why he should not be involved much in immorality. And then the same book, Proverbs 31, verse number 10 to 31, it talks about a wife of a noble character. Maybe you are a wife. Study Proverbs 31. You'll be able to know how to conduct yourself as a wife. Also as a man, study the Bible. you receive knowledge about people in, in the Bible, how they conducted themselves in their marriage, and how Christ advised them. Read the, read the epistles of St. Paul to the Corinthians. You'll be able to acquire what he taught them in the area of marriage. Psalms contains, the book of Psalms also contains a form of knowledge on how to worship God. How David worshipped God. How, 
how he, he went before the Lord whenever he sinned, how he would repent, you would equip with that knowledge. Hallelujah. Maybe you are a pastor. Maybe you are an elder in the church. Read the Bible. You will receive knowledge to run the church. Knowledge to run your career. Knowledge to run your business. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. That is knowledge to acquire. Now, before I end this broadcast, I want to remind you. I spoke about speck. Any verse you read in the Bible, look for sins to confess, promises to claim, examples to follow, commands to obey, and knowledge to acquire. Pick any random verse in the Bible and use that formula. It's just a basic formula for an average Christian. Let us you graduate to know the Lord. This revelation will be coming to you in a deeper way and you'll be able to know more about God in the, in the scripture and you equip yourself with the deep revelation of God. Genesis chapter number 1, it says that in the beginning, God, in the beginning, God created the world. There is knowledge there about creation, how man was created. How man was formed. There is knowledge. Hallelujah. Don't ignore the Bible. Study the Bible. It's very interesting. Anytime you look at any scripture, just use that simple basic formula and you'll be a blessed Christian. Hallelujah. God bless you, viewer. I'm hoping to see you in another telecast and the Lord is going to bless you. Let me pray with you as I read this scripture. Wherever you are, repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come before you, forgive my sins, open my brain, open my mind, my soul, and my spirit, that I'll be able to study the Bible and understand your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this viewer, wherever he or she is, give him the Holy Spirit and give him guidance to understand the Bible in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you and keep you. I love you. Bye bye. God bless you all. We shall meet another time by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. Amen.